Okay everyone, today we're going to be putting graphics on an NCR Veteran Ranger helmet. If you order graphics from us, you'll get a sheet of the transfer decals and two vinyl masks. First step is to use an X-Acto blade to cut the border off of the transfer sheet. And be careful not to touch the back side, which is the black side of the transfer decals. Uh, the oils on your skin can cause the decals to stick to your fingers and that'll just mess them up. So next you're going to separate all of the individual decals. The X-Acto blade works better than scissors uh, just because the transfer sheet is so thin uh, it's hard to manipulate with your hands so it's just easier to cut it when it's laying flat on a piece of cardboard so just make sure you have like a brand new blade or a newly sharpened blade uh, so that there's not any snagging or catching on the transfer sheet next we're going to use some sulky kk2000 spray adhesive and we're just going to put a coat on the back of a piece of cardboard. That's going to hold the transfer decals down onto the cardboard so that we can apply the spray adhesive onto the back side of the transfer decal. Um, this way they're not blowing all over the place as you're applying the spray adhesive. So as you put the transfer decals down, just give it a quick tap around the border of the transfer sheet without actually touching the decal itself. Also for the uh, two decals with the arrows and the word slot, if you cut an angle above the arrow, it makes it a little easier to apply to the helmet. After we get all of the transfer decals onto the cardboard, we're just going to use the spray adhesive and put a light coat um, over the all of the graphics, all the decals. And you'll see it fog up here as I spray it. You don't need a lot of the spray adhesive. All right, next step, we're going to go ahead and prepare the helmet. Uh, we're going to use some rubbing alcohol uh, to clean off the spots where we're applying the, the decals. That's just going to help the decal, uh, the adhesive to stick better to the helmet so that there's not any like loose paint or uh, dirt or anything like that, oils on the surface of the helmet. Just takes a little quick rub with the alcohol. All right, so with the transfer sheet, you can actually see through it a little bit, even though it's fogged up from the spray adhesive. So you're just going to hover it over the surface of where you want to apply the, the decal. And then when it's in position, you lay it down and then press it down with your thumb or finger. After you've given it a good press and rub, you can pull the transfer sheet off and the decal should stick. If you pull the transfer sheet off slowly, then you'll be able to see if there's any spots that didn't stick. Um, and if you're, if you, if that's happening, you may need to apply a little bit more spray adhesive to the other 
transfer decals. After you pull the transfer sheet off, also it's a good idea to just go ahead and push down on the decal a little bit more. It's not going to come off on your finger this time because it's stuck to the helmet. So you're just pushing it in a little bit more and making sure that there's not any loose parts. And here you'll see I'm actually tugging on it a little bit. If the decals touch the surface of the helmet with the spray adhesive, they may stick to whatever spot you touch them down at. So sometimes though if it's just a light, if it's just lightly touching, you can still kind of pull it into place. And you just have to be careful if it looks like it's not moving or if parts of it are sticking. It's probably best to just leave it because if you keep on pulling it, you're going to make it look all muddy. If they're if you're having a hard time reaching a certain spot, you can use a tool like the X-Acto blade to actually hold the decal in place. And I know these helmets like the back of my hand, so for me, I know exactly where all of these decals go. But for you guys, you may want to also check out some of the pictures of our helmets. Uh, take a look where the, the, the decals are. Um, or you could check some of the original reference materials from the game um, and take a look at those where those decals are. It's going to be pretty much in the same spot. Um, and all of these decals are screen accurate. Uh, so if you're looking at the right reference materials, you're going to see all of these decals on the helmet and there won't be anything missing. It's a little tougher to apply the decals into the recessed areas. Uh, but this area here is pretty large, so shouldn't have too, too much of a hard time. These transfer decals have a lot of intricate detail in them. Let's take a look at these tiny little numbers on the outside of this one. On this next one here, if you take an X-Acto blade and just make two cuts on either side of the A without cutting into the, the circle, circular arrow, it'll help uh, apply it over. On our helmet, the button is raised up a little bit and the A goes on the button. So that'll allow the rest of the arrow to stick down on either side of the A. Or if you're really careful, you could cut out the A and apply that separately. All right, the next step is to apply the vinyl masks so that we can paint the larger graphics. You're gonna have to use a heat gun or a hair dryer It's a good idea to refer to a visual reference so you can get the positioning correct. Once it looks right, you can just lay it down. Now, we're applying a flat vinyl uh, mask onto a curved surface. So not all of the vinyl is going to stick down especially towards the outside edges, which is why we're going to use heat so that we can shrink the vinyl and make it conform to the curved surface. And you can peel up the vinyl mask to work out any of the wrinkles or bubbles that uh, are showing up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. 
you just mainly concerned with the area around where the actual painting is going to happen, the border of the, the painting. You want to make sure that that's stuck down good without any wrinkles, um, you know, throughout the body of the mask or around the outside edges. It doesn't really matter if there's wrinkles there. Now this is a smaller uh, mask so it fits a little bit better um, although we're still going to apply a little bit of heat just to shrink it down and, and rub out any of the wrinkles but there's not as many on this side it's a little easier to work with. All right, now that's done, we're gonna get the paint ready. We use the Folk Art Parchment color. And we just squirt a little bit into a paint tray. Use a paper towel. And we're gonna do a dabbing process to apply the paint. So get a little bit of paint on the paper towel and then kind of smush it around in one of the other trays. And we're just gonna dab it on and spread it around. We're gonna go for three coats total. The first coat is just going to be a base coat, which is going to cover most of the open area on the mask. Sometimes I, I leave some areas unpainted that kind of make it look like the paint's chipped or worn off. And for the second coat, we're going to apply um, the paint a little bit more sparsely so it doesn't cover all of the open area and then for the third coat we're going to do the same thing a little bit more sparse on the paint and that just make, gives it a more of a worn uh, aged appearance and it adds a little bit of depth so I just use a little bit of an artistic approach to it if you get any paint on the helmet outside of the mast area and just use some water and clean it up real quick. It comes off pretty easily uh, before the paint fully dries. And this paint does dry pretty quickly, so you'll be able to pull the vinyl masks off pretty much right away. All right, and we're all done. Next up, what I do is I usually apply a black wash to the helmet just to keep, grunge it up a little bit. That's it, folks. If you have any questions about applying these graphics uh, or any of the steps in the process, just contact us and we'll help you out. Thanks for watching.